just thought I'd make a video of this pretty cool, uh, most likely military grade board I got on eBay. Uh, this was a few bucks and I, I picked it up because it has so many uh, ceramic gold chips which I, I do really like. Um, I kind of collect them and I pop the tops off and get microscope shots from time to time. Uh, I haven't done any on uh, any recent ones but you know, I'm mostly waiting for summer so I can go outside and do it because it's kind of smoky. Um, this board is very conformally coated as you can see by the lovely shininess of it. Uh, it's got this uh, big AMD chip on it. I think it's AMD, yeah. There's the AMD chip logo. Uh, and a couple other smaller ones. Uh, I think that's National Semi. Uh, these are all dated around 1978. And yeah, they're all um, ceramic, even these ones. And there's a few interesting parts. One, there's this very interesting little capacitor that's covered behind a little piece of like nylon rope. Let me, uh, or string. Let me get this snipped off. Working through the camera. It's difficult. Oh, um, it actually goes through the, uh, the back. Maybe I'll just snip it there. See if that's easier. I don't know if this was put on before or after the conformal coat. Oh, it looks like after because it's like fused to the surface of this, so it may not come off without a fight. There we go. Yeah, it looks like it's a 50, 50 volt cap. And we've got these nice little potentiometers and this cool uh, which way are the letters it's hard to see so shiny uh, there's a cool part here let me get a little screwdriver uh, this might do this is actually a switch you can see um, two sets of uh, contacts or um, well it's a, basically like a, a dip package and you can put this in and turn it and it's actually a switch quite interesting I've never actually seen one like that I'm sure that was very expensive as with everything else on this I mean even this connector is so strong I cannot bend these pins they're just ridiculously strong and there's the uh, airborne logo or name not too sure what this board was used. Maybe it's for um, something in avionics. ATWK Revision B. Nice uh, bodge wires on the back. There's just a couple. And I don't think there are any things on the front. One thing I did notice is that some components were removed before I got it. So I'm not sure what was here. But they, they it looks like they were actually snipped out. It doesn't look like it was like an impact because like these canned transistors are still here and they look fine. Uh, these are some kind of cool looking caps too. This may be hard to de- I'm, I'm going to desolder these chips. So it may be pretty difficult to do this because this conformal coating is really strong. <laughs> like, I can barely break through it. So depending on how much of it is under the chips, I may not be able to pop them off too easily. But I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Since I'm going to be desoldering, I'm, I've got my Heiko FR300. This thing is just, well, the actual tool is great. I, I, I've actually uh, had a, used it quite a bit lately, and it's really, really good. But this case is the worst thing ever. I don't know what Heiko is thinking. L listen, all I want is a holder for the tool, similar to the one that comes with my um, 888D, which is right here. Something like this. These are actually kind of hard to find secondhand, which is annoying. Uh, I'd like to buy just a second one. I bought one of their other models. Uh, it doesn't even match it. But uh, we'll see how that goes. All I want is a holder like that. And maybe something simple like a little flip case or something that holds all the tools. Because it comes with a long slot screwdriver for cleaning the tube. And uh, one of the pokers 
for cleaning the uh, this is the one millimeter um, open or sorry uh, yeah one millimeter uh, opening uh, tip now I bought another one I bought a six 1.6 millimeter and I also got a uh, another poker which by the way is sixteen dollars which is insane for a bent piece of wire but hey um, you know I, I just want something to just hold the tools or that the accessories and a stand I don't want a carrying case what good is a carrying case for this tool where am I going with it I mean yes I get the the whole idea that it, you can pack it away when you're not using it but but look at this okay up at the top this goes here this goes here okay where does this go it doesn't fit in any of these so why have one you know you sell like I think there's five different sizes why the hell did you design this to hold one like it doesn't you can't put it anywhere like why and you know you've got stuff like other tips, which again, this is $22 for a little piece of metal, but you know, they do last a long time. And you've got your spare, ex your um, consumable refills. And where do they go? Where, where can you put them? Every time I open this box, all the parts fly everywhere. It's, it's just mind boggling. Yeah, I can put them in Ziploc bags, but then the Ziploc bags fly everywhere. And like, it's, ugh, who thought this out? And like, you know, you got the little holder, which is okay, you know, it sits on its side, and it, it, it does work, but I mean, it's kind of silly, because you knock it off so easily. I want, you know, like the gun holder, like the, um, the triple eight. This piece is used for swapping out the tips, and it clips in. It's got a proper space for it. So, why does this have a space, this have a space, and two tools? It comes with these. Why are these just sitting here where they fall out every time? Why is this not in a thing that actually holds it? It's just, what were they thinking? Like, just make a, either make a case that works, which this clearly doesn't, or, you know, give us something proper, like a holder, so you can keep it on your workbench, because what am I going to do? Keep, keep this out. This is a little heat shield thing for putting it away. Am I going to keep this out on its side like this on my desk, taking up half the desk? No. I want it upright where it can just sit out of the way, relatively speaking. And, like, why? Ugh. Listen, it's a good tool. The case sucks. They really just didn't think of how you'd use this thing practically. That wasn't so hard. Um, the conformal coating isn't actually underneath the chip, so that was actually pretty straightforward. Hopefully I can get the rest of these off. I don't think I'll film it, just because it's kind of boring watching me go over and over again. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the board isn't doing so well. Some of the uh, um, solder pads came off, but that's not a big deal. It's not like I'm going to be using the board. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the rest of these off. It took a little bit of time, but I got pretty much everything off. Uh, incidentally, this is actually a four-layer board. I don't know what a four-layer board cost in the 70s, but I'm sure it was not cheap. So, yeah, I um, popped off most of the chips, and a couple of them disintegrated. Here's, uh, here's one of them. I don't think it'll focus this close. I don't even remember what the focus distance is on this camera. Oh, cool. There you go. There's one of them. And... Ooh, it's doing the cool tracking focus. Okay. There's another one. These kind of just separated. See, uh, ceramic uh, encased chips are um, two layers. And they're like epoxied together. So you can usually just pop the top off. Uh, these ones are actually brazed along the edge, and you can just heat it up with a hot air gun and pop off the top. And uh, yeah, this is the switch. Incidentally, it's called Dip Switch. Copyright. Made 1978. And yeah, it just connects a row of uh, 
inline uh, 0.1 inch pins and I made some art while I was doing this <laughs> the uh, uh, little reservoir in the back of the uh, the Heiko filled up and I wasn't really paying attention and yeah I made kind of like art sure oh I broke it the lovely 1970s solder filled with who knows what and uh, yeah I just I pretty much took mostly the chips off I did it very quickly as you can see a lot of the rings and solder are still on the edges what I was doing is uh, I just quickly run the uh, desoldering gun along each pin and then just pop them off with my lovely uh, Wea screwdriver and my brand new Wea pliers, needle nose pliers were really great. Uh, incidentally, I'm not uh, sponsored by Wea, although if Wea wants, I will promote the shit out of those. I will make up things, tell everyone. And by everyone, I mean my, like, eight subscribers. These are the greatest tools in the world. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they pretty much are. Uh, I've got some ESD tweezers from them, and these were the first WIA products I got. These things are absolutely, like, razor sharp. And I have put these through hell. I have scraped PCBs. I have... Um, gouged out stuff on circuit boards and uh, I, I, the abuse these have gone through like I, I use them for everything they're so good and yeah they're still like needles so yeah really good purchase and yeah I, I, that got me hooked on wheel products um, one day I will get that big technician's screwdriver kit on Amazon for $300 but uh, one day so yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. There were a couple oddball parts like this uh, kind of weird ass capacitor. And um, I popped off a couple of these. They look like precision resistors. And I'll, you know, take a look at those and then throw them away since I don't really need them. And whatever this thing was, which I think was a precision wire round, wound resistor or possibly an inductor, uh, just kind of disintegrated when I took it off the board. So, one day I will make a nice long video of decapping ICs and looking at them under the microscope. But, until then, bye for now.